Welcome to an episode of Behind the Scenes, a weekly program unveiling the biggest political developments in Somali politics and the wider Horn of Africa region. I'm Sultan Mohammed, your host and co-producer here on Horn of the Media alongside Suleiman Hashi. On this week's program, in a post last night on social media, the National Intelligence and Security Agency of Somalia announced and exposed a plot by Al-Shabaab to assassinate the President of Somalia, Mohamed Abdullahi Farmajo, and his Prime Minister, Mohamed Hussein Roble, as the Prime Minister previously warned of a threat to his life. The Somali public and media reacts. Also on the program, the federal election hits yet another roadblock following the decision by the Federal Election Implementation Team Chairman Musa Gele to suspend the seats of some MPs from both Hirshabele and Southwest State, including that of Fadiasi, creating a rift not just between FEET members, but the office of the Prime Minister and federal member states, including Southwest State. These are the topic on the programs today. We hope you find this program very informative. Please like, share, and for similar comments, Content, do subscribe to Hot for the Media. Also, do subscribe to Hot for the Media Group's second channel known as Hot for the TV, where you can find exclusive programs such as Maha Hesele, Dulmar, among others. And last but not least, do follow myself, Sultan Mohammed, Suleiman Hashi, Yasin Abdi, and the wider Hot for the Media team on our social media platforms that should appear on the screen any moment. Let's get straight into it. The situation in Mogadishu continues to worsen as violence overshadows an already deadlocked election. In an unprecedented statement, the Somali National Intelligence and Security Agency, NISA, warned of a future terrorist attack, assassination attempt to be exact, on the Somali president and his prime minister. The statement read as the following. We have briefed the heads of state on a plot by Al-Shabaab aimed at the president and the prime minister. Mohammed Mahir, a senior Al-Shabaab assassin, is leading the completion of this plot. We are investigating everyone involved. Al-Shabaab has recently stepped up their attacks across Somalia as the presidential election draws ever closer. The recent bombing of Beledwina saw over 47 individuals killed, including the former Somali federal MP Amin Mohammed Abdi, and wounding nearly 105 people more. Similarly, we saw an attack on Halane, which was quite quickly suppressed by Haram Ad police units that neutralized the two militants immediately. Indeed, some of the questions being raised are how did the two militants manage to get in to Halane and get past Amazon soldiers that were manning the gate. Now, as many of you already know, no Somali can actually enter the compound with weapons and the entire security of Halane is directly controlled by Amazon High Command. So how these militants managed to wiggle through the beefed up Amazon security is something that ought to be not just investigated by the new Atmis, but also the Somali Ministry of Defense. We have also seen Al-Shabaab militants attack military installations, including af in the Bari region of Puntland state. There we saw eight deaths, five of those being soldiers of the Puntland Rawish units. Now there have been numerous other attacks in 2022, including a recent IED attack actually this month in the Atmos units on the outer skirts of Mogadishu in areas called Hawa Abdi and Lafale. An attack in Mogadishu back in February saw districts including Kahda, Yaqshid and Darus Salam being targeted, including police stations there. Now what is clear from all of this is that Al-Shabaab is currently successfully implementing its terrorist strategy of creating chaos using conquer and division tactics. We have seen many Somali politicians and analysts point the finger at Nissa without an iota of evidence. Some went on so far as to say the former Nissa chief and now MP Fad Yassin as being directly responsible for the bombing in Beledwina. And this is despite the simple, truthful fact that Al-Shabaab has already claimed the attack. It's a suicide bombing. Now the reality is that Nissa has been under fire for months now since Prime Minister Robler effectively removed Fad Yassin from office and has been targeted by a number of conspiracies that Nissa works directly with the terrorist group Al-Shabaab or that Nissa has connections to Al-Shabaab directly. Of course, this all lacks the basic common sense. The sole purpose of Nissa is to use secretive and intelligence tactics to weed out any terrorist hiding amongst the general population, as well as protect the civilians and heads of state, as well as defending Somalia against foreign enemies and plots 
Now, while Al Shabaab has successfully conducted terrorist attacks in Muqdisho, and nobody is denying this, but one thing we can all accept that there has been a gradual fall in terrorist attacks over the years, until of course this year. The reality is that Al Shabaab is gaining from this politicization of terrorist attacks. It is using this momentum of division and chaos in the Somali political system to not just stop this election, but to destroy the very governmental institutions that underpin our fragile state. Unfortunately, the political games being played by some politicians and presidential candidates are far too dangerous and feeding right into the propaganda and agenda of the terrorists. Now, the plot to kill Prime Minister Mohammed Hussein Roble was initially mentioned by himself during a speech last week. The PM highlighted that he has been receiving continuous threats from persons that he did not reveal and that he was scared for his life. Now, of course, we all sympathize with the Prime Minister, as we've just seen with Nissa's statement, and we should be very worried about the Prime Minister's safety, and I hope that he remains safe. But the problem is that even if this is not true, or whether it's true, irrespective, such a public statement only plays into the hands of Al-Shabaab because it provides this sense of authority and confidence amongst them that they can even chop the head of the snake, as they put it, or in other words, neutralize and kill heads of the federal government, and in a sense, embolden the terrorists rather than discouraging them. Irrespective, both Prime Minister Roble and President Farmajo must beef up security and reduce their travels in the coming weeks as the threat of assassination hangs directly over their heads. Interestingly, one observation I have made is the deterioration of the security situation in Somalia has been increasing ever since Mr. Abdullahi Noor was appointed security minister. Unfortunately, we haven't seen any public statements addressing the public that outline any kind of detailed plans or even simple measures to curb these continuous threats. The reshuffling of Nissa also played a direct role. And what needs to happen here is that the Minister for Security, Abdullahi Noor, must be held accountable for the lack of security and the deteriorating situation, not just in Mogadishu, but in Somalia as a whole. Now, swiftly moving on to the elections, another rift has exploded between federal election implementation team members as Chairman Musa Gele released a statement that would essentially nullify the election of a number of seats, including that of Fahad Yassin. Now, both Hirshabele and Southwest states rejected the statement, outlining the correct procedures were taken to elect these individuals and they would themselves provide certificates for their MPs. Now, the reality is that clan elders of some of these seats have not raised a concern. An opponent of Fahad Yassin, for example, have not conveyed any discontent with the result. And as a matter of fact, there's also the Resolution Committee. Now, the Federal Election Resolution Committee has been designed and created to deal with electoral problems. So why the Federal Election Implementation Team is crossing into the realm of the Resolution Team is unknown, and it doesn't make any sense within the framework established by agreements, such as 17 September agreements. Now, following this statement, another statement was released by FEET members and it overturned a decision by the chairman. And there would be an exchange back and forth of statements in which Gela would then eventually fire the secretary of FEET. And in response, some members held a vote of no confidence that removed him of office. Now, of course, this was overturned again by the prime minister. And this battle is a proxy war. It is a proxy war for a greater battle at play as Prime Minister Roble grapples with the committee and wrestles for Mr. Yassin's seat. Now, Fahad Yassin has become of a somewhat controversial figure in Somalia and has been the continuous target of both opposition politicians and Prime Minister Roble. And ultimately, Roble fired two members, including Chairman Mohamed Erro, in a decision which was rejected by South West State. Now, the problem here and the irony here is that some of the members that Mr. Robler threatened of removal and some of the members he did remove were the ones who supported him during the vote to remove the former chairman, Mohamed Erro, who was alleged to have close ties to Villa Somalia and eventually voted Chairman Musa Gale. So at the end of the day, Robler even betrayed those members that supported him during a time where he needed that support politically. 
Now, Southwest State has ultimately rejected all of this that's going on. And in a statement, Southwest State House accused the Prime Minister of hijacking the federal election implementation team and withholding three Southwest State seats illegally. The statement went on to accuse the PM of politically motivated rash decisions and outlined its clear decision to discontinue cooperation with the Office of Prime Minister regarding the electoral matters due to a loss of confidence, describing the PM as, and I quote, reckless. Now, similarly, in a statement this morning, Gelmuduk State expressed concern about the unilateral decision being made without the consultation of the National Consultative Council. Now, indeed, two questions are probably arising from this predicament. Question one, can the PM even make such unilateral decisions? Well, technically, he can't. This is because the Federal Election Implementation Team is an independent body. And independent means that it's independent from federal member states and also independent from the federal government of Somalia. Therefore, it is for the National Consultative Council to make a joint decision once reaching a joint conclusion. Unfortunately, this wasn't the case. And the Office of Prime Minister representing the federal government is only one signatory of the agreement. The other six were not consulted. And as a result, the decision would be illegal. It would be null. The second question that some of you might be asking is, has the National Consultative Council actually collapsed? Well, technically, it has. And this is because Southwest State is a signatory to this council. And decisions cannot be made without Southwest State. And if Southwest State is saying that they do not have confidence in the Prime Minister and his and the handling of this election, that means that there isn't, uh, that means Southwest State isn't a member of the National Consultative Council anymore. And without its membership, it cannot be called a National Consultative Council because it's not national anymore. It's missing an entire federal member state. And therefore, this would eventually nullify the National Consultative Council. So many are asking probably, what is next? What do we do next? Where's Somalia going next? Well, Somalia is in a dangerous predicament at the moment. And some politicians are accusing security institutions, including NISA, as being Al-Shabaab, which damages public confidence. The scale of disinformation regarding Baladwene, Halane, the election delays, has caused large-scale division within the Somali public yet again, and the threat of a terrorist attack has put everybody on alert in Mogadishu. The rift between the federal leaders is worsening as Southwest State calls its MPs back to Bay Double, which saw dozens of MPs flying out of Mogadishu today. The illegal unilateral decision to remove members of feet and withhold seats for political motivations by the PM has seriously damaged the confidence in his office and in the electoral process. He's already failed in the security of the elections as bombings of venues in Beledwina killed over 40 people and constant attacks across the country on his leadership has deteriorated Somali's security. The completion of this election is the only way out. The reality is, is that way back in May 2021, President Mohamed Abdullah Framadjo transferred the security and governance of the state of Somalia to the Prime Minister. And now, nearly a year on, the Prime Minister has not only failed in the security of the election with MPs such as Allah Naharista Amin or Mohamed Abdi being killed, but also resulting in a collapse effectively of the Federal Election Implementation Team at the National Consultative Council. It is time for federal member states to take the initiative and complete the handing out the certificates for the remaining MPs and begin the election process for the Speaker.